transformative Supreme Court hearings, presidential election drama, and congressional debates. We hear a lot about what happens at the federal level of government. But what about the more ignored but more accessible state government? Come learn with me today about what the state government really does. As stated by our founding fathers in the U.S. Constitution. Totally not paraphrased. The power is not given to the federal government in the Constitution. Well, they're given to the states. Basically, the federal government is given a series of powers, some of them directly stated, some of them just implied. There is some stuff that the state and federal government both can do, like setting up courts or spending money. Because of this amendment, the states alone can do stuff like education, policing forces, figure out people's zoning. The blueprint for our state government is in our state constitution, just like at the federal level. All 50 states have their own written constitution at many different lengths. And for the rest of this video, I'm going to be focusing on the state of New Jersey. And two quick facts about New Jersey. We are not the armpit of America, and we have an amazing Jersey Shore. So New Jersey has had three iterations of the Constitution. First in 1776, then in 1844, and then finally in 1947. So it was the first Constitution that separated us from Great Britain and also set up our general structure of government. Go Jersey! So just like the federal government, the New Jersey state government has three separate branches, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial, all with checks and balances on each other. One of its many similarities with the federal government. <laughs> the executive branch made up of the governor, the lieutenant governor, and all the state agencies. Power of the executive varies based on the constitution. In New Jersey, we give the executive, the governor, a lot of power. You can think of the governor and lieutenant governor kind of like a president and a vice president of the state. They both have four-year terms, are elected by the people, and oversee the operation of the executive branch. More specifically, they can appoint heads of state agencies, have some sort of veto power, and call in the National Guard for emergencies. <gasps> so next is the legislative branch that has two houses just like Congress, an assembly and a senate. In the Senate, there are 40 representatives, and in the Assembly, there are 80. Both houses work to introduce and vote on laws for New Jersey only, as compared to the Congress, which works on laws and passes them for all of America. There are many ways for you to get involved in the legislative branch in New Jersey, from visiting the Trenton State House and getting an official tour, checking out the New Jersey legislative website and following bills, and even applying to join the New Jersey Youth Legislative Council. The final of the three branches is the Judicial Branch. So the federal courts, while they involve cases with U.S. laws, U.S. constitutionality, and disputes between states, it's the state courts that decide most of the family law cases, most criminal cases, and a lot of tort cases that are basically about personal injuries. So this is the general structure of the New Jersey state court system. The top dog is the Supreme Court. On the court, there are seven justices, all appointed by the governor in New Jersey. Below the Supreme Court is the Superior Court. Cases usually move from the Superior Court up if necessary. Alright, I hope that was helpful. Check down in the description for more resources.